Well, some indoor and outdoor spaces are now easing coronavirus restrictions. While most people have been stuck inside for months, we know many of you are eager to get outside, especially with the summer weather. We know you have a lot of questions, too, about summer safety. So I have with me today Dr. Max Gomez, the senior medical correspondent for CBS2 in New York. Max, how's it going? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> we're, we're all kind of locked away inside here, getting a little squirrely, but uh, not bad. Not bad considering, but today hopefully you can shed some light on some safe activities people can do outside, especially with the nicer summer weather that we yeah. are all experiencing right now. So I want to ask you, Dr. Max, what are some safe outdoor summer activities that maybe provide some exercise and a chance for people to finally socialize in person? So those are kind of two different things. Uh, one is activities where you can get outside and have a good time and get some exercise. And then the socializing part of that is where it adds a little bit of extra, extra risk, right? There's nothing that you can do that has zero risk. So you've got to first understand that. So anything you can do outdoors is actually probably better uh, and is usually better than staying indoors with a lot of people. Outdoors, with a breeze blowing, social separation is easier, social distancing is easier. Um, you've got a lot of uh, a breeze that blows away the virus and dilutes the virus and so forth. In terms of socializing, that's where you've got to go back to really being really careful with the same things that we're doing walking on the street uh, or being around other people, wearing a mask and social distancing. As long as you're doing those two things and you're outdoors, and you're not in a big crowd, then you're usually pretty, pretty safe. It's the, it's the being in a crowd in enclosed spaces for longer periods of time. All three of those things raise the risk. Dr. Max, let's talk to about travel because that's something that none of us have been really able to participate in in recent months. So if somebody, let's say someone is planning some sort of summer family vacation, what should they look for in a destination to make sure that they're staying safe, they're socially distancing while also still having fun? First of all, it's travel, right? It's where, where are you going to go and how are you going to get there? Um, and in general, driving with family members, people who ha you have been around for an extended period of time is generally safer than air travel, except for the part about car accidents. So we have to kind of put that in there because you're, you're at greater risk driving than in terms of accidents and you are flying. Uh, but air travel is still a little problematic because we don't know uh, how consistently airlines are going to be enforcing wearing masks, leaving some seats empty so that you can socially distance. You're going to be surrounded by a lot of people uh, who may not want to wear masks, but also may not, um, uh, may not have been very careful about their own social distancing and corona hygiene, if you will. As far as a destination goes, again, anything where you can practice that kind of social distancing. Mostly being outdoors is going to be better than being indoors. Let's talk about, for example, uh, amusement parks. Most of them are still closed, but some are talking about opening up. Those can be really a, a problem because you're going to be almost always in lines. Even if, even if they um, enforce sort of a decreased number of people that they allow in, you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people. Even if you're outdoors, you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people. And it's unlikely that they're going to be, you know, enforcing wearing masks and social distancing. I want to ask you too, I know a lot of families like to travel together, it saves you money, helps financially, right? But how safe is it for folks to share another vacation home with, a, with another family? And what about staying in those vacation rental homes? Is that another risk for people who, you know, there might have been somebody in that room 24 hours before you? The longer that vacation home or even a hotel room has been empty, the safer you are number one, because the virus really doesn't stay around on surfaces for all that long. We hear about it for hours and a few days, but basically it's not too long. And the CDC has said that that surface to surface or surface to person transmission is a very low probability event, not zero, 
but very low probability. Again, it's still airborne. That's the number one way, but it's still a good idea to, for you whenever you go into, whether it's a vacation home or a hotel, do your, you know, wipe down the high touch surfaces. As far as sharing a vacation home with other families, how well do you know them? How well can you trust them to have been truly quarantined for at least the last two weeks before you share that space with them? How did they get to that hotel room or to that vacation home? Did they fly? Now that's put them at a little more, uh, you know, risk for exposure. So that, you know, may or may not be a great idea. And let's talk about the kiddos next because school's been out for months. They haven't been allowed to, to go to any classes or really hang out with a large group of friends. And now summer camps, this is typically the time that those start back up. And I think I'm going to know the answer to this before I ask it. But how safe is it to send your kids away to these summer camps? You know, that's a, that's a really, that's a tough one. Uh, let me start out by saying the CDC has a really terrific uh, website webpage on their sites of all of the different questions that parents should ask camps, what kind of camp it is, whether it's a day camp, a sleepaway camp, and so forth. One of the biggest things is, uh, you know, kids going away to camp, they're not gonna be wearing masks, right? You're not gonna be able to enforce that all the time. You're in bunks with, with kids, they're not going to be socially uh, distancing uh, in any way. But uh, the biggest, one of the biggest issues uh, that I have and that the CDC points out is, depends on where these kids are coming from to the camp. Some camps draw kids from all over the country. Now you might have kids coming in from some real hot spots, right? So you don't know exactly uh, where they're coming in from. Kids don't tend to get as sick as adults. They get sick though. It's a myth that kids don't get COVID-19, but they tend not to get as sick as adults on the other hand, there's a handful of kids that if they get a relatively minor disease, they develop this syndrome called MIS-C, which is this multi-system inflammatory disease, which can be very serious. So, so day camps are a little safer because you know who they're, you know, who they're coming from and who their you know, kids are with. Uh, but those sleepaway camps, those, those can be risky. Dr. Max, thank you so much for spending some time with me today and for all this valuable information to help keep people safe this summer. You can read even more about summer safety right now on the CBS New York website. I'm Katie Johnston for CBSNewYork.com.